Hi there. Welcome to week two. So week two is all about what is anxiety. So I'm going to start by telling you what anxiety isn't. And then I'll come on to what it is. So anxiety is not a mental illness. Anxiety is not something that happens as a result of an experience or a person. It's not something that happens as a result of something or someone else in your past, in your present, in your future. You know, we experience the world inside out not outside in, as I, as I told you in, in week one. There isn't anything in our past, in our future, in our present that can damage our innate mental health. The mental health that we were born with, all of us, no exceptions. Anxiety is not something that you need to fix. That would imply that there's something wrong with you. That would imply that you're broken and you're not. So if anxiety isn't any of those things, and if you're anything like me, that might come as a bit of a shock for you because I thought that was the definition of anxiety. What? I see about anxiety now, what I see to be the truth of anxiety now is that anxiety is a perfectly normal human experience. Not necessarily a nice one, agreed, but it falls into the same category as joy and sadness, calm. It's a human experience. Throughout the day, we can have a myriad of thoughts, all experience through our current level of consciousness. All that has happened for you, as it had happened for me, is your psychological innocence. You forgot you were okay. You forgot you always resort back to your default setting of peace. You made up a big, believable story about you defined by anxiety. You chose the thoughts innocently that you wanted to engage in. And, and when we choose to engage in thoughts that aren't helpful, we're not gonna feel great. We don't get to control our thoughts, but we can control which ones we engage in. Generally, my rule is, if you feel bad, don't trust your thinking. Chances are you're in a low mood and you've made a great big believable story about your thought storm. That's it. Leave it alone and it will pass. There's a definite difference between our thinking in a low mood and our thinking when we're home. So for me, when I'm caught up in a thought storm, when I'm in a low mood, as we all do, you know, this fast human experience that we have, like it isn't always up here. Sometimes it's down here. Like, and that happens to me too. It's just, it doesn't bother me anymore because I know it will pass and I know it doesn't mean anything. So when I'm in that mood and I have that kind of thinking, everything feels urgent. Everything feels like as something I need to do. Like everything feels like it's 
it's me, it's I, it's my fault, it's her, uh, this means something about me and never something, never anything particularly nice or good. Or... When I'm home, the voice is different. When I'm home, the thoughts that occur to me, the fresh new thoughts that occur to me are clear and calm and peaceful. Like it feels like they're spoken with kindness, not anger or hurt or desperation or like if you really, really get curious about that, you'll really start to see the difference. We could remember that we feel what we think 100% of the time. So it stands to reason when your thinking's crappy, you're gonna feel pretty crappy too. The amazing thing about that is that's mind that's wisdom that's universal energy whatever it is you want to call it it really doesn't matter that's that in action that's evidence that it exists it's telling you that you're off so if that's all it is what's there to fear like i mean really what is there to fear? We are spiritual beings having a human experience all the time. We might not like our current experience, but that's true for all humans. If we don't create a storm or a powerful story, the experience will pass. Get out of our own way and allow the system to do what it's meant to do. To reset, to go back to default, to return us to our innate mental health. I look forward to seeing you all on the call on Tuesday. Take care, lots of love.